we shout it out. We're alive, cause you're alive, and what a love we found. Death can't hold us down. We shout it out, we're alive, cause you're alive. Weeks ago on Kingdom Stuff, and I think this is the sixth message in this series. I, I've I've enjoyed this. I've had a good time. We're going to continue this for a while. Of course, next week is going to, going to be obviously Christmas related, but uh, then we'll pick back up with the uh, with the Kingdom Stuff series after that. And by the way, if you have missed any of the messages, you can pick those up and watch them again on either Facebook or YouTube, whichever you choose. And uh, anyway, pick up and kind of keep in series here with what's going on. Today we're going in a little bit of a different direction, and we're going to talk about this fact, that Jesus has already picked you. Amen. So the title today, I've been doing this one sentence sermon thing lately, so the title in and of itself is the one sentence sermon today, it's the proposition, it's what I want to talk about uh, this entire uh, rest of the morning, the rest of this 25 minutes that I have allotted to me today, that Jesus has already picked you. Because you are one of the whosoevers. Right. When we talk about and when we read about in Scripture, the whosoever, you're one of the whosoevers. You're one of the chosen. You, as a matter of fact, are handpicked by God. I like that. Amen. You have been handpicked by God. So... You may be here or you may be watching online and you're not getting this yet, but I'm going to tell you, you have been chosen by God. He picked you because you are special to him. He picked you because he loves you. He picked you before you ever even knew who he was. Would you give him praise this morning in this place? You say, well, I'm, I don't know that I really get all that yet, that God can really love me that much because I, I made a lot of mistakes in life and I've got this... I've got this problem, I've got that problem, I've got this past, I've got this thing that went wrong in my life, I've got this that's going wrong today, and how could God really, God really does love you that much. He still picks you, he still chooses you in the midst of what you have gone through. You don't have to wait till you get good enough to be worthy to receive Christ into your heart. He loves you so much that he has chosen you, he has picked you, and he has decided, I'm going to love those folks on planet earth. Even when they're unlovable, I'm going to love them enough. 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ died and gave his life for us. Amen? Amen. So again, the point this morning is simply this. Jesus has already picked you. He already loves you. When, when you get this and when you understand what I'm talking about, then it becomes easier for you to grasp and understand how it is that you can come to the Lord and He just receives you. When you come to the Lord with a repentant heart and with a humble heart, he just receives you, and it's one of the glorious things. It is the glorious thing and the greatest miracle that could ever happen in your life when you come to him with an open heart and you receive him. He receives you because he's already made a way for you. Give him praise again this morning, if you will. I'm thankful to be a brand new creation in him. Before we read out of the book of Matthew, though, I want to go to the book of John. I want to read a portion of scripture from John chapter number 14. John chapter number 14 is often read and we often hear that at funerals. But John chapter number 14, the first few verses of that really shouldn't be just related and equated to funeral messages and whatever. Because what we really see here is not so much uh, just about death, but it's about life that Jesus Christ has made for us. And so, so Jesus, as, as we get this, we'll go to verse number 1, John chapter 14, verse number 1. But Jesus has uh, made a way, and he, he is describing what takes place from both a physical and spiritual aspect. I will tell you that when you get saved, when you are born again, I will tell you that there is a miraculous transformation. For many of us, it happened in an altar of prayer. For some people, my grandpa, I think it happened out in a, in a cornfield, out in a corn patch. But, uh, you know, wherever it is that you get saved, that you get touched by God, 
That's the time that that transformation takes place. You become a new creation. You are brand new in Christ when that happens. Old things are passed away and all things become new before you. So what I'm trying to say, you don't have to be good enough to get saved. You just have to come to him. Amen. John chapter 14, verse number 1. Jesus said, let not your heart be troubled. And th these next words are, are so vital to this text. He said, you believe in God. Believe also in me. I want to settle something before I go any further in this message. Almighty God is real. There is a God in heaven who loves you. There is a God in heaven who knows your every thought. There is a God in heaven who knows everything going on in your life. There is a God in heaven who loved you enough that he sent his son. He gave his only begotten son. So God is real. And you say, why would, preacher, why would you say such an elementary thing? I'll tell you why I say that. Because some people don't really believe that. Amen. There are people on planet Earth today, there are people in Mena, Arkansas today, who still don't really fully believe 100% in their heart that there is a God in heaven. Well, I will tell you, there is a God in heaven. Amen? Amen. Amen. If we go back to Genesis chapter 1 real quick, just in our minds, Genesis chapter 1 and verse number 1, the very first scripture in your Bible, it says, in the beginning, God. In the beginning, God. So God existed. If you break that down, it's the same as saying God was in the beginning. God was there. And so the people in the Old Testament understood that. The people in Jesus' day, they understood that. It's time for people in America today and people in the world to understand there is a God in heaven. Amen. Amen. So, Je so Jesus said, he said, you believe in God. He spoke that to his disciples. He said, you believe in God. Brooklyn, he said, believe also in me. He told that. You believe in God. Now, the second thing, believe also in me. And then he says this. He says, verse 2, in my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. And then Jesus said, as this is just a short while before he is going to the cross to give his life a ransom for many. And Jesus says this. He said, I go to prepare a place for you. He was fixing to give his life so that you and I could be born again. Can I get a witness this morning? The heavenly father has plenty of room for you in his kingdom. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and say, that's good preaching, whether you like it or not this morning. The heavenly father has plenty of room for you in his kingdom. Jesus said that he was going to prepare a place for you. He was accomplishing that by laying down his own life on the cross by shedding his blood. You say, well, that's not politically correct to talk about shedding of blood. I will tell you, Jesus Christ shed his blood. That is the only hope of redemption for mankind. Amen? Amen. But Jesus, in doing so, by him giving his blood, shedding his blood, giving his life, by doing that, he picked you and he picked me. To be his. Are y'all with me this morning? Amen? Amen. He picked me and he picked you while I was yet a sinner, while you were yet a sinner. He picked me to be one of his. He chose me. I am a chosen one. You are a chosen one this morning. Amen? Amen. So you don't have to worry about that. And you don't have to wonder about that. You don't have to wonder, am I really chosen by God? Yes, you have been chosen by God. Amen? The question maybe you need to ask sometime is, have I chosen him? Because he chose me, amen? So let's tie this truth now into Matthew 20 and 20, where we were at last week. We'll pick that back up as we finish up the year 2020. Matthew chapter 20 and verse number 20. The visit uh, that Jesus had with uh, James and John and their mother. And to set the scene again for the text, 
Jesus and his disciples are walking along the road one day, and uh, they didn't have automobiles like we do, and they're walking along the road one day, and, and so Jesus, I believe, is inspired by the Spirit of God to pull them over to the side and have a talk with them. And he does, and he basically says, hey guys, we're, we are right now headed to Jerusalem. I want you to understand this is just days before the crucifixion. He's about to be killed. And so he said, hey guys, we're headed toward, I'm paraphrasing of course, headed toward Jerusalem. And when we get to Jerusalem, I'm going to be betrayed. I'm going to be killed. I'm going to be crucified. He says, they're going to mock me. They're going to scourge me. And if you know anything about that you know anything about the scourging process, if you know anything about that, you know that was going to be a horrible thing. Now we think we've got it bad if somebody mocks us, don't we? Jesus was not only going to be mocked, he was going to be scourged and he was going to be crucified. He was going to be hanged on a cross. with spikes through his hands, or wrists, and his feet. He was going to hang there until he died. And so he's telling them, I'm going to be killed. They're going to crucify me, but on the third day, I'm going to be raised from the dead. Amen. But let's read what happened. Matthew 20, verse number 20 says, Then the mother of Zebedee's sons, now we're talking about James's and John's mother. Okay, James and John's mother. The mother of Zebedee's sons came to him, Picture the two boys. She came with her two sons, kneeling down and asking something from him. And he said to her, what do you wish? And she said to him, grant that these two sons of mine may sit one on your right hand and the other on your left hand in your kingdom. But Jesus answered and said, you do not know what you ask. Are you able to drink the cup that I'm about to drink and be baptized with the baptism that I'm baptized with. And they said to him, I like this. I, I brought it out last week, but I love this. Say, yeah, we're able. I believe we got this thing. So he said to them, he said, you will indeed drink my cup and be baptized with the baptism that I'm baptized with. But to sit at my right hand or on my left is not mine to give, but it is for those for whom it is prepared by my father. Uh, I recall so clearly, so vividly, uh, many, many years ago, I was in probably the second or third grade in school. Now, that's been a long time ago. Sister Riddle, that's been a while ago. And anyway, I was, uh, I was second or third grade. I don't remember exactly how old I was, but I will tell you that, you know, I'm just a little fella at that point. And, and uh, I remember one day, and I know Sister Minnie Cossey is here, and she had a niece. Now, I didn't know the relation back then. I didn't, I don't guess I knew Sister Minnie back then, but uh, Sister Minnie Cossey had a niece named Minnie Marks. And uh, I remember uh, back in the day, y'all remember this too, how, how you would get, you'd be having some kind of game that's going on, and you would choose teams. Say, I want to be on your team. I want you to be on my team. Y'all know what I'm talking about? And so you would choose. You would have team captains. You'd have two captains. Uh, this particular day, we were going to be playing soccer. And, and so Minnie Marks was one of the team captains, and she was going to get to choose. And, uh, of course, Minnie Marks was a lot of, she was quite a bit older than I was. And uh, so, wow, Minnie Marks is getting to choose. And somebody else, I don't remember. I, don't, I have no idea who else, but I remember Minnie Marks. And lo and behold, even though I'm so much younger than Minnie Marks was, Minnie Marks, now, by the way, Minnie Marks, to me, she seemed athletic. Minnie Marks, she seemed pretty. Now, like I say, Brother Al says, Pastor. Keep in mind, I'm like the second grade, maybe third grade, I don't know, but, but girls were pretty back then even in the second grade or third grade, okay? Now guys, I know you're sitting by your wife right now and you ain't dare gonna say a word. And so anyway, Minnie Marks, would you believe that she's choosing people and she chose me to be a kicker on her team? It meant so much to me that Minnie Marks 
chose me. I got up there. I still remember it. I mean, I got up there and I took off. I was kind of athletic back in the day as a little bitty guy myself. I kicked that ball. I think I kicked that ball with more strength than I even, I mean, the adrenaline was going because many marks picked me. Uh-huh. Yeah. Many marks. Yeah, guys. Many marks picked me. You know, I think about that, though, and I think about how excited I was about that, and I think about how excited you and I ought to be that Jesus Christ picked me. Jesus Christ picked you. Jesus Christ chose us to be on his team, to be a part of his family. Amen. Would you give him praise this morning in this place? I'm reminded of a verse that I touched on last week out of the book of Mark chapter 3. And verse number 13 that says that it says that Jesus went up on the mountain and it says that he called to him to himself those he himself wanted and they came to him I, I don't know what that does for you but it means a whole lot to me that Jesus cares enough to choose me to be on his team amen, amen. Jesus cared enough to call me chosen I am chosen. I know they make, Hollywood makes movies about this, but I will tell you the first one that had the chosen one was Jesus Christ. God Almighty, he chose us. Amen? Amen. I was thinking the other day about people who have been adopted. And I've, I've heard people talk about, I've heard various people who maybe they, they were adopted and this and that, and, and uh, throughout life sometimes they would be discouraged because they were adopted as a child. It really should be just the opposite. Amen. Here's why. I was thinking about Wayne and Carolyn, and I was thinking about Dax. And most parents get what they get with kids. Right. Wayne and Carolyn, they got to choose. Are y'all with me today? Yeah. So when Dax grows up, ah, I shouldn't say this. But when Dax grows up one day, and he gets to be older, and somebody says, so you're adopted, huh? I can just imagine that Dax is going to look at him and say, yeah, my parents chose me. Your parents got stuck with you. <laughs> Please don't tell Dax. Please don't repeat that to him. I love what Romans chapter 8 verse 15 says. I want to look at that in the uh, New International Version. I, I like this. It says, the spirit you received does not make you slaves so that you live in fear again. Rather, the spirit you received brought about your adoption to sonship. And by him we cry, Abba, Father. I wish somebody in this place would help me show Jesus Christ just how much you appreciate him loving you and caring for you. Amen. Give him praise this morning. Can I say that God found exactly what he wanted when he found you? You say, Pastor, I've got flaws. Don't we all? Don't we all? But God found exactly, when he picked you, he found exactly what he wanted. Amen? Do you realize how miraculous and how incredible it is that, that you were conceived and you were born and you grew up to be you? With hair? Some of you? Just looking around. You are perfect just the way you are. I was riding down to uh, Groveton, Texas with Brother Donnie the other day, and, and something was said about uh, something messing his hair up. And I said, well, you've only got two. You know, which one got messed up? God made you perfect just the way he made you. Amen. God could have chosen anybody, but he has chosen you. God could have loved anybody, and he does love everybody. But he chose to love you. Amen? Amen. Somebody give God praise today, if you will. You were chosen by God and God picked you. It is miraculous that that has happened the way it has happened. God chose you to be in this service right now. God chose you to be listening right now. God chose you to be sitting next to the person you're, you're sitting with right now. God chose you to be with the parent that you're with right now. God chose you to be married to who you're married to right now. Amen? Amen. 
I'm reminded of the prophet Jeremiah, what God told him. In Jeremiah 1 and 5, he says, God said, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you. Amen. Amen. Before you were born, I sanctified you. I ordained you a prophet to the nations before you knew anything about it. Amen. So the next time you catch yourself wandering around and wandering around in self-doubt, wondering whether or not God chose you, let me just tell you that God did choose you. You are special to him. He loves you. He cares about you. He has a destiny for you. He has good things in store for you. He has a future and a hope for your life. Amen? Amen. Amen. So I want to I, I this morning go to uh, Matthew chapter 20 again. I want to look at these two guys. Or I want to look at the whole story here as quickly as I can. I have six minutes left. In Matthew chapter 20, Jesus picked... He chose these two guys that we're going to talk about, one named James and the other one named John. Jesus called them son, the sons of thunder, uh, fireballs, I'm sure, in more ways than one. But what I see is that they were chosen to exist and to minister at an exact time in history. They were picked for an exact time. In other words, it was no accident. It was no mistake. They were conceived. They were born. They grew up in a certain family with a certain daddy and a certain mama. They were at a certain place when Jesus certainly walked by and certainly chose them. Let me say again what I said a while ago. You are no accident, and it is no accident that you are here in December of 2020 in America. Amen? Amen. Amen. So let me bring this home today. Jesus caused me and Jesus caused you to be on planet earth right now. Right now, Brooklyn. You're on planet earth right now. Jesus chose you to be here right now. Jesus picked me before I ever knew his name. Now, why in the world would he do that? Because he loved me so much. And not only did he love me, but he had a plan, Sister Barb, for my life. Are y'all with me today? Amen. Amen. Let me take a time out for just a minute. I know we're not in sports today. There are still people, and I think there's even somebody that's listening today that still doesn't get it, that Jesus chose you. You're not, you're not messed up. You haven't made too many mistakes. You haven't been born into the wrong family. Jesus has chosen you for such a a time as this. You say, I've got all this stuff. I've got all this baggage that I'm dragging through life with me right now. And I know Jesus maybe wouldn't want to mess with me right now. I'm going to tell you, Jesus Christ wants you to love him and he loves you right now. He has chosen you even with all the baggage in your life. I don't know anybody that doesn't have a little bit of baggage. And I get a bigger amen than that. Amen. Amen. In Mark chapter 2, verse number 17, I want to prove something to you that Jesus, I want you to understand this. If you think Jesus died for perfect people, think again. Amen. Jesus said this. He said, those who are well have no need of a physician. Amen. But those who are sick. He said, I did not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. Your heavenly father has chosen, he has picked you to be right here, right now. Amen. He knew that you would have gone through life already and you had, would have experienced a, certain, experienced a certain set of circumstances. He knew that you would have gone through life and you would be here today having gone through some various, various many trials in your life. He knows that you would have gone through life and you would be right here today and you've had pain in your life. You've had suffering in your life. You've had hurt. You've been wounded. You've gone through stuff. He knew about all of that. And he said, in the midst of all that, I love you just like everybody else because you are a whosoever. Amen. Give him praise again if you would this morning. When Jesus called out to you, 
How many of you are born again? Can I see your hand? How many are born again? When Jesus called out to you, he called out to somebody that he wanted. Amen. Now, for anybody listening who has not accepted Christ, he's calling out to you today Amen. because he wants you, if I can say it this way, on his team. Amen? Amen. 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 Let's go to uh, Mark chapter 4. I want to give you a quick scripture. I've got less than one minute. I've got to hurry. You may recall what Jesus said right before he uh, went to, he walked by the Sea of Galilee and called out to Peter and to Andrew and James and John. He, he made a statement. Matthew records this immediately prior to Jesus calling these guys. And it, it says this. It says, from that time, Jesus began to preach and to say, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. He's still saying that today, I believe. Amen. Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Amen. So Jesus is calling to people today. He's calling his own even to recognize what he's already done when he went to the cross. Amen. I want to wrap this up. Back to Matthew chapter 20 real quick. Y'all know what it means when a preacher says he's, he's uh, ending. He's closing. Not a thing. Not a thing at all. Toward the, this is toward the end of uh, Jesus' ministry upon planet earth. He's about to go to the cross. He's about to give his life, as I said a while ago, a ransom for many. And with that in mind, the mother of Zebedee's sons comes to him with a question. And uh, verse number 20 says, Then the mother of Zebedee's sons, by the way, I, I, need, some, I need some help. Uh, Tom, can you come? And Christy, can you come? And, and uh, Dylan, can you come? And Brooklyn, can you, can you come? Hey, here's... Y'all tell me I'm not wise. I picked all these people out of the same family, so they don't have to wear a mask right here, okay? All right, all right. You're going to play Jesus. You get right back here, okay? You're going to play Jesus, all right? Uh, you're going you're gonna to play the mother, all right? And you're going to play James, and you're going to play John, long hair and all. Come over here. Come over here, all right? And you're going to, no, you're going to get right here. Here's Mama. Mama's in the middle, facing them, okay? And so the mother of Zebedee's sons, are y'all getting this? Hey, Jesus, how you doing? Good, good, good. All right. I understand we're playing like. I think the Lord understands the illustration today, all right? For all you really holy people out there, I have to say that for you. And so Mama comes and she brings her two sons. There you go. She brings her two sons, and then Mama kneels down before Jesus, and, and Mama says, I, I've got a question. She says, says Jesus, oh, you've got to look at her. you got to look at her. Jesus, when, when, you know, a little bit later, said, when, we come into your, when you come into your kingdom, can, 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 my, can my boys, can one of them be on your right side? And, and can one of them be on your left side? Jesus, would, would that be okay? And what, what I want y'all to understand is this. Picture this for a second. What I want you to see is perhaps Mama missed something because when she asked the question, can, can we have one on your right side and one on your left side? Perhaps the thing that she missed was that they were already there because Jesus had already picked them. They were already there. You're already standing there. By the way, we didn't set this up. It just happened this way this morning. They were already there. James, John, you were already chosen. You were already picked. Give them a hand today for helping The kingdom of heaven is at hand. You have already been picked. You have already been chosen. 
We've been grafted in. We've been adopted. Sons and daughters of the King. He loves you that much. Sister June, he cares that much about you. He picked you. Red hair, freckles, and all. He picked you. Joshua's this tall. And Lydia's not. They're both in the balcony. The lights are so bright, I can't see if they're frowning or laughing right now. Great or small, he chose us all. He chose us all. He chose you. He chose me. Amen. Would you stand with me today? Could it be? Could it be that Jesus has already chosen you? Could it be that someone's listening right now that they just never really knew it? But he did. He chose you. We're all different. Every one of us in here, we look different. We act different. We have different personalities. We live in different places. So good to have Lakey and Virginia here from the group home. We all live in different places. We all experience different things, work different jobs. But God loves us all just as we are. So we come to him just as we are. The old song says, just as I am. Just as I am. I don't have to get myself perfect to come to the Lord. He's the only one that can make us perfect. It's, it's, it's through his shed blood that causes us to be righteous and justified. It's only through him. Would you bow your head with me right now? I just want to ask a question real quick before we close this service. I want to ask a question. Is there someone here today that would say, Pastor, I believe today I'm chosen. And I believe that, that God loves me and I need to get some things right with the Lord. I need to be forgiven. Can I see your hand? I need to be forgiven. Just right up and right back down. Thank you. Thank you. Who else today? Thank you. I need to be forgiven in my life. No one looking around. Just between you and God right now. Just asking this question. You just sense the Lord knocking on your heart's door. Saying, would you come to me? Would you come to me? Is there anyone else that wants to be included in this prayer? Thank you, sir. I saw that hand. Anybody else before we pray? This is the perfect opportunity. Perfect opportunity right here before Christmas. Get right with God. Anybody else before we pray? Anybody else? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Church, I ask you just to pray right now. As God moves upon hearts, God moves upon lives. Is there anybody else that would say, Pastor, pray for me. Just slip up a hand. I promise I'm not going to embarrass you. Is there anybody else? Say, pray for me. Pray for me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Father, thank you for loving us. Thank you for choosing us. Lord, today there are those that have said that they want to get some things right between you and them. So, Lord, we come to you right now. We come in what is known as faith. We know, Lord, that faith pleases you. And so, Lord, we come today believing. We do believe in God, the Father. And, Lord Jesus, we believe in you. We sense you moving upon our heart today and upon our life. 
So, Lord, we come to you right now. And, Lord God, we just open up our hearts and we say, Lord, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Please forgive me. For you shed your blood for me. You gave your life for me, Jesus. So I ask you to forgive me. And Lord, today I believe that you are my Savior. You're my Redeemer. You're the Messiah. So Lord God, I thank you for that. And I give you praise that today as I confess you as Lord and Savior, I give you thanks that my name is also written down in the Lamb's Book of Life. I give you thanks for that. I give you praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Can you give the Lord praise this morning?